All right, we've got quite a bit of work done here since we've last touched base with you. I had a lot of this other stuff that uh, we did videoed, but it was just repetitious stuff and it just was gonna turn into a rather long video. So we'll just kind of fast forward through what we've done up to uh, this point from where we last left off with you. We've got these pieces on here. They're welded. We've got to paint them yet. I've just got some primer on them and we've laid out the hoses for the um, hydraulic downforce and for the hydraulic drive on the um, fertilizer pump. These are going to plug into the power beyond spots on the back of the tractor, which that's why I have the tractor in here. We've got to put the PTO generator on it, and we've got to put a couple of fittings in the back of the tractor to accept these hydraulic hoses that are going to run these last hydraulic functions on the planter. Now, there is a hydraulic valve that mounts here inside this frame mounts up on top of it. When I first set that in there, I thought that was going to uh, be in interference of this cylinder. However, it is not. I folded the planter up before we put it on, uh, put it on there, checked it, and then we unfolded it and uh, have got that all mounted. So we've got several hoses coming out of that valve here there's three uh sections in this valve that hook up to the independent row uh, down force and we have got all of those hoses on as well so we've just uh hooked all these hoses up as well there is uh three sections like i was saying there is the wings each wing the center the, the right wing, the center, and uh, the left wing, and then they're teeing in uh, right here on the wing, running hoses over to hook to the valve. Same thing on the other wing, and then up over the backbone here, they tee into a line coming off that valve as well, a pressure line and a return line. So we've got some hoses left to hook up here on the hydraulic drive for this pump yet. I've got the hoses coming off up into the bulkhead here. I've just got to finish fastening them up. And we've got a um, case drain for this little hydraulic motor that's on here that we have to tee into the Oh, the uh, case drain that's more or less already on this planter, and we can tee in. I, we just found that here somewhere, but it's the case drain that's coming off of the hydraulic motors for the vacuum, and they've got that same case drain teed in with the uh, compressor. Now, we let when we also left off with you, we were starting to work on that compressor. However, we had to order some parts for it. I've got that set in here somewhere. In the directions they show that the top of this uh, valve plate that was on the compressor, they show this top coming off and then they show these units here being able to stack on top. Now there's three of them there. Uh, I just received this uh, plate that's going to mount on top of the compressor and where this one went, now there's a like a nipple coming up out of the compressor that this sets down onto, and that's how you get the uh, air out of the tank itself to go to the functions. This here plate, I guess I can pull this off. I just have to reapply that. This plate here, um, we needed this plate to be able to accept these uh, valves and this plate was $2,200 for just this plate. However, I need the top portion to go on to it. So there's an O-ring that, there's just an O-ring that you put in and then there's this little exhaust plate 
that goes on and then you just stack your valves up on top of that and then there's a, a bolt kit here they're supposed to be different length bolts compared to they don't they're not any different the only difference is there's they, i don't know why they sent three they sent three bolt kits with each valve all they had to send was one bolt kit and the three valves so we're going to hook up a couple more hoses here and then we're going to work on the power beyond fittings that are going to go on the tractor along with hooking up the alternator slash generator that's going to generate all of our power we've got the alternator here we got the gearbox that's going to come off of the pto we've got the bracket tree for it and as you can see the cardboard tables that i have laid out have they're empty all we've got left is some zip ties some miscellaneous brackets and that is about it here is the power beyond kit here that has to go on the tractor and then of course we've got some uh stickers to put on it and uh we'll get after it here we'll join back up with you when we get a little more done okay now we have got all of the hydraulic hoses hooked up i have some fertilizer hoses to hook up to these manifolds i've got this hose on there where it runs over to the pump i've got to hook that up yet i've got the feed hose to put back on there i basically took about every hose off and put it back on rerouted it so that it was a little neater in the placement of it it still looks like a mess in that general area right there and we're going to have even more hoses coming through there here in a little while i've got to hook up the row cleaners yet and i have to run the in furrow uh, hoses splash some paint on these brackets here or these channel irons that i've welded onto the draft tubes on both sides and i've got the hoses and the wiring all tied together now the harness for the lights and for the fold on the old system here I'm gonna leave right in the draft tube just gonna zip tie them out of the way we've got the um, old harness on this side that was I don't even know what the heck this one did can uh, that would be for uh, the ISO bus again we're gonna leave that wire harness alone in the event that we blow a hose or something on this and we pull the hose out of the draft tube we'll be able to get the connector that's on the end of these wire harnesses here back down through this tube and pull it out the other option i have is i can just chop this harness off and uh pull it out that way but i'm not sure if somebody's going to want that harness or whatever but it'll probably never get used but if i cut it as soon as i cut it somebody will be asking me if i've got one of them so uh like i said we've got the pneumatic downforce to hook up i did get the manifold here or the uh, valve section all together here uh for the pneumatic uh what am i talking about here the, the uh row cleaners i think i was calling them uh closing wheels the row cleaners we have pneumatic row cleaners on this it does also have an option to put pneumatic uh closing wheels on this got an air tube here we didn't opt for that kit however this valve stack here that's going to be going on to the compressor is going to uh, be able to run pneumatic closing wheels in the event that we end up changing over to that so if you recall in the earlier clip here uh, when we had this little $2,200 plate um, we stacked the valves on there we've got the covers on both sides 
and now I need to go through and figure out what wire goes to what get it matched into the harness here get the harness plug mounted here and then the harness that is on the backbone of the main uh, wire harness for the planter will plug into the plug that I mount into that bracket. We've got some other wires that we need to secure on the back of the planter here. It has a tail light harness for a commodity cart if you're going to pull one of them. Uh, we've got the ability to plug the lights into that. It's a uh, it's right uh, where is it? Right here maybe or is that a can can diagnostic there's another plug here somewhere so we have to um, tie up some more wires and stuff here yet but uh, we're gonna wait and get the rest of our air hoses on there I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and check on the girls they are chisel plowing just down the road here and they ended up getting my green Chevy out here the other day so we'll take a ride in that down the road here and uh, we'll see how they're doing chisel plowing. Well, we are just getting on location here. Um, they're just about done with this field, so I'm going to have to drive into plowed ground. I was going to get my drone out, but I'm not in the mood to get that fired up. So they're just coming up through here doing headlands. Got Alex with the 8360. And we're following in behind Sarah with a 9560. I don't think I have shown any of that chisel plow. Maybe I did. I think I did the other day, actually. So these conditions are absolutely perfect. Ooh, got a stone there. Can Sarah wave to us? Oh, she's smiling and smirking at me. Can you wave? Oh, we got a wave out of her. I should have tried to get down here a little earlier than I did. This is only a couple miles away from the farm. We got like 20, I think there's 20, 27 acres in this field here. There used to be a hedgerow that ran to, uh, well, right on Sarah's left hand side here. So this was actually two separate fields and what she'll do is she'll end up turning around she'll grab that headland there and then she'll they'll run up that other side they'll use uh, that strip on that far side to get back and forth so that they haven't got to do a figure eight or anything it looks like she's gonna actually go the other way do that headland on the west side and then, uh, I don't know what she's got left. Looks like. Got a, so, I think we might as well get back to the shop. They're going to move to a farm that's maybe 10 miles from home. And, uh, maybe we'll take another break from the shop. And uh, I'll have to give them a ride home. So we'll, we'll touch base with them again at the end of the day here. This is a wet side of the field right here. 
and we're walking right up through here with the pickup. I'm in four wheel drive, but I don't need four wheel drive. It is uh, April 29th today. I had a memory come up on my Facebook thing there from Wednesday, April 27th, and uh, they were plowing in the same exact field. It was actually Andrew and Sarah plowing together, and uh, this year it was Alex and Sarah plowing together. What did I say? Alex and Andrew or Sarah and Andrew? So, I guess we'll get back to the shop here. We got dust rolling out of the ground. This ground is going to fit up pretty good this year compared to past years here. I mean, that, that's a uh, perfect condition. So, I need to get my ass in gear here, get the planter done. And then we could start fitting ground here. This, today's Friday, so first of the week. First of the next week, we're going to have at it. It's a little cold right now, but, you know, it's going to take a little while for the seed to take off. And by the time it does, it'll be warm out then. So we'll join back up with you once we get back to the shop. Well, I guess that is about gonna do it for today anyways here i've got all the airlines hooked up to the pneumatic row cleaners i've got a little bit left to do with hooking up some more air hoses here uh they gave us green and yellow hoses to run down to the row cleaners themselves we've got them all hooked up and i've just got to finish hooking up the air hoses into the different control valves that are on the compressor there. So when we come back at you, we'll end up having the, uh, we'll show you what things look like with the power beyond fittings that go on the tractor. And we of course have got to get the alternator hooked up and stuff like that. We've got very little parts left here to actually go on uh, the planter itself. And once we get this planter done, then we can start working on the six row planter. I want to see if I can get the three bushel boxes to go on that planter. We've got the uh, frames here. Sarah took them off of the old hoppers that are outside and we've got a pile of hoppers on the other side of Jared's truck over there. So that is going to do it for this video, folks. I want to thank you for watching and we will... Catch you at the next video.